Okay, it just seems like you're part of that Randy Bennett um, tree, and a lot of the guys there have had great coaching jobs, but they always seem to use it sort of a stepping stone and everything. It seems like you're settled in for the long haul at UH. I was kind of wondering what, what made the decision to, um, or did you ever think that you were going to be a long-term um, head coach staying here instead of using it as a place to go somewhere else? No, it's a good question. I'm honored to be part of a couple of trees. Obviously, I've spent more time with Randy Bennett, who's one of the best in the country, than I have with anybody else. Uh, work, learning under Coach Wallace, uh, obviously with Coach Nash, um, playing under Lee Wimberly at Swarthmore College. You know, a lot of us have moved on from that tree, obviously, like you're saying with Coach Bennett. Not many have actually used the stepping stones. I think a lot of the guys have, are still at their spots. I know Kyle Smith has has gone to, you know, from Columbia to uh, San Francisco and then Washington State. But, you know, I, I worked for – I played for a guy who was there for 20 years. I worked for Randy Bennett, who's going into year 22, I believe, or 21 or 22. Uh, Coach Wallace obviously was head coach here for 20 years. Coach Nash had been here for a long time. I kind of gravitate towards that, to be honest. And I think a lot of us do um, in terms of building a program, continuity, stability, uh, all those things. And, you know, running a program – in the top-notch manner in all areas. And it, it's nice. I like being part of that. I played at one high school. I went to one college. Uh, so I haven't, you know, this is my 20th year actually in coaching. I've only been to two schools. I, I, I like that. I like having relationships with our players, the administration, the community. Uh, I kind of gravitate towards that. Alan, go ahead. <clears throat> Coach, why now? Why was the opportunity to get this done before a season started or wherever it may be? And uh, forgive me if I didn't know where the your current contract w- ended, but why was this timing important for you? Um, I think it's for both parties. I mean, obviously, you're, you're, the, the timing and the conversations never happen. I don't want it to ever happen during the season. And so you're locked into the season. Um, after the year, you start to have conversations and you go from there. And there are not a lot of them because you want to get back to work and build your team. And, and that's kind of where the focus is at. So um, the conversations between both parties um, a little bit during the year, but not to take away from the focus a lot kind of after you can recharge once the season ended. And then, um, you know, you kind of go to work and spend your time again on your program. So um, when these announcements happen, they're usually and they I think this is the fourth extension since I've been here and they've always happened around now. Uh, and you see that around in the country nationally. You certainly don't want it to happen later in the summer, into the fall. Um, kind of you, you, you get it done, and, and then you get back to work and, and build your team. We talked to Coach Beeman just a little bit ago, and she talked about how important it is for stability-wise for recruits. So with that in mind, how important is it for you, for recruits to see it and see three more years attached to your name and, and what that means for their future? Yeah, I mean, for for what are the three biggest groups, right? Your your alumni base, your current team, the recruits. Um, it's not just stability, obviously. It is with our staff. Um, it's also continuity with our staff, and 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 then you have to have combine that with momentum. I feel like we have a lot of momentum. We're coming off our fifth straight winning season. Like I said, our entire you know most of our staff is returning. We have ten guys coming back. Um, that's a large number in today's age. So. There's a lot to be excited about, and, and today's announcement kind of was a step in that direction for all those three groups I talked about earlier, uh, knowing kind of where we're at, where we're headed, and excited about both those things. I mean, the future is really bright. We're looking forward to it. Josh. Coach, I know in, uh, in David Matlin's statement earlier today, you know, one of the things he mentioned was culture, and I know that's been something that's been very important to you. Last year with the injuries, obviously, uh, the pandemic, it could have very easily been a test of the strength of that culture. Now leading into the contract extension, going into another year and seeing how that team persevered and almost solidified the way that culture should work. How gratifying is it to you to see now that bridge from last year and, and how you worked through into the extension and into the excitement of the new year with what you talked about with so many players coming back and, and most of your staff returning as well? Oh, that's a great question. Well, culture is about people and we're rock solid there from our staff to our student athletes, um, you know, our administration, the university, the state the community. Um, it allows you to withstand some things that are outside your control. And, you know, we've only been here seven years, but it's, it's, Sometimes when something like this happens, you look back and go, you know, dealing with the, the NCA and the fallout from the NCA, and then all of a sudden you deal with COVID and the fallout from COVID, um, the ever-changing landscape in Division One athletics. 
it didn't help that we've had these unique injuries each of the last three years, but we've never fallen off a cliff. Um, you know, we were excited about the group we had this cut this past year. And then we lose two stars before the year we lose Elliot and score to end the season and have a better year. And that more than anything uh, answers your question. It speaks to the culture and, you know, the, the confidence to build off this, you know, certain young guys, as you know, were thrown in the fire because experienced guys were out for the year. Uh, that will help them and has helped them towards the end of last year and help them for this year. And those guys who are out are back. We've added a good group. We're only in the, you know, the end of week two in summer. Summers have been good for us. As you know, every year we've had a guy emerge that made a big jump and got better. So uh, we're expecting our returners to improve. We're expecting the newcomers to improve and the culture to continue to build. Uh, and, and while we've dealt with a lot of stuff that's out of our control, there's going to be a day where they're gonna, it's going to be smoother and here comes our breakthrough because that's where we're at now. We need to make uh, the next step and, and to break through a little bit more. Reese, um, you talk about the newcomers um, expecting them to improve. How much contributions are you expecting from this, especially with you guys having, like you said, 10 players coming back? Yeah, it's, it's going to be really competitive for spots. I mean, you saw that last year at Good Depth. Can you imagine what that team would look like with all those guys healthy and the competition and the depth? And so we've been talking about that the last couple of years and three straight years, we've had two or three guys go down. But, you know, it, it, you don't you have kind of an idea going in. Remember, we're in we have a seven week summer session. We're only in the end of week two. And then we have a six week fall session, six week practice session. So a lot can change between now and then and, and the culture of, of improvement and the development of these guys and how they I think that will help us too because the competition is so good you know iron sharpens iron so you know I, I have an idea of some of the new guys um, who can make immediate impacts um, but we'll see how it plays out uh, that's the good thing we'll we'll probably have some good players playing behind some good players but and some guys I think towards the end of the year or maybe after a non-conference a couple things on their belt as you've seen in past years they get a little more comfortable so the newcomers are behind because they got to get comfortable in the system and, and some of the wrinkles we'll put in this year. But I'm really excited about how that competition will play out. And I think it will bode well for us moving forward. Sienna, go ahead. Congratulations, coach. So this contract extension will take you to 2026. Can you talk a little bit about what it means to plant roots here in the Hawaii community? I know you've been here for seven years, but what are some things that you want to accomplish off outside of the courts? Oh, that's what I'm really proud of. Like, you know, this is a, a program uh, on the court, off the court, in the classroom. We have um, run it right in every aspect. And so on the floor, in the classroom, obviously, we have five academic all-conference guys. And I think our academic situations is the best it's ever been. APR is rock solid. Um, in the community, you know, I think you – and obviously that's where as, as we get through COVID, we can get back to doing even more of the things we'd like to do in the community – you know, seeing camps return, uh, we added a, a third camp when we got here. We just added a team camp. So, you know, we're still trying to grow the game. Um, as you guys saw, there's hopefully more official announcement around the corner about, you know, playing on other spots of this island and in other islands. Um, so a bunch of those things. There's when we got here, you know, I walk around a lot, um, talk to alums a lot. Um, people are really proud of kind of the direction and how we've been innovative and and try to build, you know, have an all-encompassing program. Uh, but looking, you know, you know, talking about when we wanted to create momentum to get a new practice gym, and that's done, and the new locker room, and that's done, new conference room, introduced the tip-off event, um, had a 100th year celebration with the alums, and then COVID hit, and some things had to go on the back burner. We weren't allowed to do certain things. Just so, uh, to answer your question, to see some new ideas that we've had in the back burner, even you know, our community, our fans are going to see some of that come back. And there's nothing like it to just build your program and continue to add uh, new things. Alan. One of those new <clears throat> things that you touched on is that Thanksgiving uh, parade, or it's not, not parade, sorry. <laughs> it will have a parade on that day, but the Thanksgiving tournament up there in La EA. How excited are you for, for uh, to take the bows on the road, just up the road, but also having that new event? Well, I mean, it's so, it's something we've been talking about for a while, and I hope it's a start of a trend to get us to, like I said, not just parts of this island, but to the other islands. We've got great fan bases, as we know, for all our sports. We are the pro team here. And, you know, the ability to get, you know, it was wanted it to be a little bit of a surprise and to get, 
you know, our team in front of uh, different fan bases, different communities. Hopefully we're allowed to give back and do, you know, free clinics for the cakey in the communities. Um, the North shore, as an example, is one of the great fan bases, as we all know, and we have a, a local product who's from there. So uh, I know that's going to be a special opportunity for him, uh, for our team. And like I said, a trend, uh, the start of a trend moving forward. And I think this is the first time we've got to talk to you about the, the recruits coming in with Ryan Moore and Harry. What are you excited about them? What do they bring to your program? Well, you want it to complement what we have returning and to add some new pieces and some, you know, different aspects. And, you know, you start with what, you know, you don't always replace what you lost directly. It's sometimes you, you'd like to, sometimes it's indirect. You know, we lose Mate, who was obviously a, a physical player for us for four or five years. And Jerome, who was jack of all trades for us and junior and, and those guys, their impacts and how they've improved. You bring in, obviously, size was important with Harry coming in and more coming in. And then, you know, like we said, we lose a, a, a multi-dimensional guard and we bring in Ryan, who's a six four six five guard, similar to junior in that way. So, you know, looking forward to them coming in here and, and, and hopefully we can add another piece as well to the group that's coming back. Um, it will get us, you know, again, we got to stay healthy, but it will get us when healthy to be a team that has an inside out attack, um, can play fast, um, can play big and small, uh, and is very balanced on both ends. Steven. Um, I, I guess when they talk about your extension, and everything they're talking about that you're the right guy to lead you to the next level. What, what is the next level? Is there a timetable for getting to that level? And what do you think of the progress, um, or, or um, despite all things that have happened in the past uh, seven years. You know, I'm really proud of, like I said earlier, of where we're at uh, with what's been going on. But there's no question that, you know, now we, we want the next breakthrough is you know, as good a feeling as it's been to, to be in the NCAA tournament, to advance in the NCAA tournament. Um, it will be a better feeling to go through what we've been through and get back there and then to be consistent in putting us in a position to get back there. I mean, right now we feel good because we've put ourselves in a position for a lot of excitement going into this coming year. And, and you can do that when you have stability and continuity and momentum. Um, but that's on the floor. That's the next step for us to, very clearly to get back um, in that regard and to be there consistently. Ryan, go ahead. Hey, Ron. Uh, hey. Going into year eight, for you now um when you took the job here you were in your early 30s and as you said now you're 40 uh as the grays yeah as a uh maybe not just as a coach but as i guess as a human being or one of the one of those two what do you think your area of biggest growth over this you know eight year close to a decade period has been now that's a good question i mean i'm sitting there and we talk a lot with our team on growth mindset so um just as much as we demand our guys to get better, we demand that of myself and of our staff to get better and evolve with the game. I mean, most times people say when you're a young coach and probably me as well, and now I came into a unique situation with so much going on that first year. Um, but every year, um, most people will say that a young coach, um, you know, starts to, you know, but I've done it early, you know, empowering your staff, empowering your guys, you know, it takes a lot uh, your first couple of years to, uh, put your imprint on how you want every aspect of the program to be run, how you want to play in terms of the style. And now a lot of that's kind of smooth other than a couple of wrinkles here and there, depending on the staff we have coming in and the players we have coming in. So if anything, I need to continue to grow. I have grown. I'm proud of that. Um, I think just, I think with like consistent, what I said earlier, I think things have slowed down uh, in that regard. And um you know, I continue to hopefully be open-minded on, on growing and and um, challenging myself and our staff and our team to make next steps. Josh, go ahead. Coach, you mentioned earlier the the injuries that you worked through last year. Um, do you have any update on on the progress from those injuries and, and the way back going into this season? Uh, sorry, I'm going to say this for Brian too. Sorry to come back because I should have said this. The, my biggest area of growth, even though I thought I was good earlier, was uh, having my a better balance, um, and and that's something I think coaches in general always battling because we're so competitive. 
but the balance and you want your guys, you realize that's important for your guys too, of sleep and uh, recovery. And I think that you're at your best when your players have good balance, your staff has good balance, their fam, their staff and their families are in a good place. And so that's the area of growth I'm most proud of and want to continue to build off of. Um, back to your question. Can you ask that again? Yeah, sorry. I mean, obviously the injuries last year, you know, going from beginning of the year, you know, Noel's injury later, what's the status on, on the comeback from those injuries? Yeah. So, uh, uh Samuta and Juan, as we know, had uh, successful surgeries at the end of October, I think early November and Samuta is pretty much full go. Uh, Juan is doing both those guys had successful surgeries and their recoveries have been awesome. Um, and we're going to be smart about it as it is, you know, early July. So, they're both proceeding according to plan and should be, I think Juan should be almost close to hundred percent by the end of the summer and, and go from there. Noel's was unique. What awful timing to have a sensitivity around the, you know, fractured a bone by his eye. And, you know, it's something that you're kind of out four to six weeks, but you had only four weeks left and any touch in that area could have made it even worse. So uh, that was really hard to lose him. Uh, just a unique injury at, at a unique time. Obviously he's been, back to hundred percent for some time now. And just great. Like I said, we're in the end of second week of summer workouts and just great to see them all out there again. And on, on Samuta, obviously, you know, the <clears throat> alum, um, what was his reaction when you got to tell him where he found out that uh, he was basically going to go home to play for a couple of games? <laughs> it's unique. Cause I, there's, those are special moments. And, you know, I think some of this information got out earlier uh, than we had anticipated. It was somewhat going to be a little bit of a surprise. And I think there was rumors and, and it got to him. So I remember being, and I didn't know. So I got a message from him, super excited without, you know, not knowing it was already out there a little bit. Um, but you could tell it, it's kind of what we anticipated. You can imagine. Uh, and we've done this in the past, uh, you know, even though he obviously gets to play in Hawaii. Uh, but, you know, when we take took Gibson Johnson, played at Utah his senior year and to get Samuta in his last year to play, you know, in his backyard and in, in front of his family uh, in such an incredible fan base and area he's very familiar with is, uh, I think he's still really excited. All right. I think that's it for questions. All right. Okay. Thanks coach.